Hey everybody, how are we doing? This is Dr. Ruben Valdez and welcome to the Under the Avocado Tree podcast. Today, you will not believe how excited I am to have my good uh, friend and colleague, Dr. Manuel Manotas. In my career, I've had the opportunity to see uh, Dr. Manuel. We've known each other for what, maybe 20 years or so? About 20 years, yeah, yeah. yeah off and on. Yeah. And I've had the amazing opportunity of seeing him just flourish and become this amazing, amazing clinician, this uh, human being that has such a big heart for people and really loves to love people and help people. So I feel super privileged about uh, having you on the podcast today, Dr. Minotis. Well, thank you so much. I, I, I feel flattered by that introduction. It's, it's wonderful. Well, thank you for being here with us today. Now, um, just so that the viewers can begin and the listeners can begin to have a sense uh, of who you are, tell us a little bit about your background, your training, and some of the things that, that you've done clinically. Um, sure, sure. So I'm, I'm a clinical psychologist by training. Um, and I, um, you know, I've, I've been at this for uh, quite a few years now. And um, yeah, I, I, I am also, I particularly specialize in uh, somatic type therapy. I, I, I also did a training in what's called somatic experiencing, which is a type of therapy that really works directly with the nervous system. And it helps people uh, really connect with their bodies and use uh, the, the body information, the information that our bodies gives us about ourselves to uh, regulate the nervous system and to heal some of the uh, past wounding and psychological past wounding. You see, like, um, and, I, and don't get me wrong, talk therapy is great, and I, I'm trained in it, and I use it a lot. I use a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy, psychodynamic therapy, understanding, uh, his, uh, you know, the, the, the relational dynamics of people and all of that thing. But uh, without the body, without including the body in psychological healing, we're missing a huge piece. So I really, I, I understood this. I understood this early on in my career. And I really made an effort to, through my, in my own personal practice, to really put a lot of emphasis in connecting with the, with the body, with the soma, and um, ground myself, feel myself in that way. And then I got some training in, in, in that, which has been wonderful. And that's primarily how I work now. I really, my, yeah focus on that tremendously yeah that's awesome very cool man when yeah that my, uh, dr minotas that opens the door for us to uh, potentially <laughs> <laughs> well we've had many years of friendship yeah. My apologies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's very exciting to me uh to hear you open this up because it, it kind of lines up with one of the things that i want to talk to you about today and that is uh, the ability for people to undergo transformation, mm -hmm. the ability uh, that someone can find or achieve this direction, this change, this uh, decision within themselves to yeah. move from a state of disease, a state of illness, yeah. and move into back into a state of health. And yeah. so many people that are in that state report it so difficult, so challenging, Mm -hmm. to not just come to the point of a decision, mm -hmm. but once they make a decision to maintain that decision oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. lifelong. And I know that in previous conversation, uh, I've heard you talk about this before in your, in your videos, in, your, um, in, in the information that you put out. Mm -hmm. uh, there is such a profound link between mental health mm -hmm. and chronic disease. Mm -hmm. So can we begin to open that up a little bit, help yeah. us understand uh, what are some of the challenges that people experience around this yeah. issue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, there, there, there's two, two, sounds like there's two, 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 two routes and, that I could go with your, with, your, with your question. And one is the, the why so hard for change to happen. And the other one is more the, the, you know, the connection, the link that there is between early trauma, particularly early trauma and um, uh, chronic illnesses. Uh, 
Uh, so which which one of the two would you like me to to, to go? Let, let's hit both. Those let's are both. two yeah. important connections, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. So let's go with the first one. When you when you say it, it's so hard for people, so, so it's really yeah, it, it's it's really hard. I mean, let's let's let, that's that's true. It change is not easy. Our our system, sort of say, our our psyche, our our, our nervous system, is profoundly invested in keeping some kind of stability or homeostasis. So anytime we aim at changing, we're gonna have tremendous resistance from uh, our own physiology, the physiology itself, because it's gonna try to keep us, and then not, not to mention our, our unconscious and our minds and, our, and, and, and all the different patterns that we've created through our history, our, our, our psychological patterning. So there's a lot of deep forces. And, and to top it all, it's some kind of in the change, the way we do. So, oh, this seems to have frozen a little bit. Okay. We're not even aware that we're resistant. So that makes it really hard. So that's, that's I, 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 and I see it, and I know for myself and, 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 and for the people I work with, how, how, so one of the things I always tell people is, the most important thing that you can do when you're embarking in a, in, a, in a process of change, whatever that process is, is kindness towards yourself. That's fundamental if you're, because, because it is a hard path and there's going to be a lot of blockages. And then we're going to, you know, the tricky thing is so there's all this internal conflict that's going on. So you, um, um, let's give me, give me an example. So you are, you grow up in a family where there was, um, uh, let's try to put the example related to, to let's say you want to make a, a, a habitual change in eating or, or, or whatnot. Like you want to start eating healthier and you're, you're, you know, you're addicted to carbs and sugars and all of that. And you're eating super healthy and you unhealthy. I mean, and you want to make that shift. And so you, you know, you go to your nutritionist, I suppose, or you, they come to, to, to you guys as well. And, and then, you know, you have this plan of like, you should do this, this, I don't know exactly how that works, but something along those lines, you have this plan where you're going to do this. And the person goes excited and it's going to go and they, they take a look and they look at their plan. Initially, there is this momentum, this motivation. They made the decision, which that in and of itself is hard to get, you know, because but, but they're, they're miserable, they're suffering, and they, they, they've committed and they, 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 they made the decision. So they're moving in that direction. And then, then what happens is they start a process. And then change starts to happen. First few weeks, there's motivation, there's this examine. And then, and then boom, the, the, it's, it's almost like this part of ourselves, this, this, this um, unconscious pattern kind of starts, starts ringing an alarm. Change is happening. And then in our nervous system, that is associated with danger because the pro the, all of these patterns are meant to protect us. They're, they're, so their intention, and, and I'm talking about them as if they had a life of its own because it's mm -hmm. helpful for the sake of, of, of conceptualizing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so it's almost like, it, like as soon as we start making these changes and then things start to change a little bit, this alarm goes inside. Danger. This is dangerous. We're shifting. We're going to, and, and it's almost like our sense of self has been invested in being this way and not a conscious thing. It's not like we want to, oh, I want to be, I want to be unhealthy, but let's often it's rooted in early on. So you grew up in a, in a very dysfunctional environment, for example, a, a lot of abuse might, might have been going on, or maybe even unhealthy patterns were going on. So it doesn't have to be so, um, linked to abuse necessarily so there's many factors that are going to uh, uh, shape this conditioned sense of self so and then so then as we're starting to change this resistance is going to come really strong and it's going to try to pull us back and all kinds of defenses are going to come lethargy is going to come you know our mind is going to start telling us oh just 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 you know just eat that candy again because it's good and you know and there has been good associations with eating the candy because we felt good we would eat the candy or whatever and there was this pleasure some certain hormones are releasing the brain and whatnot and we feel this sense of pleasure so there is this condition that there is there is this association with with certain level of pressure so there's many forces what i'm trying to say here is there's many forces at many levels that are working to keep the change from happening um and we have to um there's a few things that are needed. One is understanding and awareness. As soon as we start making those unconscious forces conscious, 
becoming in touch with, oh yeah, and, and understanding how the patterns work in us. So when I start doing this behavior, this inner critic voice, for example, comes up and starts telling me that I shouldn't be doing that because, or who am I kidding? I'm never gonna change because I'm a loser or whatever, whatever, that can be one voice. Or the other one could be, you know, like, oh, just, just be, be, don't worry about it. You got this, like some kind of indulgent kind of voice. You can do this, no worries. Just, just take, 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 take the, the cake or whatever, the drug, whatever thing that you want to change. Um, and then there's all this, here's the other piece. There's all this emotional pain that starts to come up as a result, because a lot of these things is also shielding us from emotional pain. Mm. So that's another big chunk of the thing. As, 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 we, as we start, um, the, the shift starts happening and, and uh, whatever addictive kind of behavior that we've had or, or tendency in a way shielding us from feeling certain emotional pains from the past. And as soon as that shifts, that emotional pain starts coming up. So then again, the, uh, that's really hard. To, we're, not, we, we're not conditioned to, or we're, we're not used to feeling emotional pain. So A, we need a lot of support, a lot of kindness to ourselves, recognizing, and, and I don't know what you think of this part, but for me, I think this is important, is recognizing that we're gonna go back and forth. That it's not gonna be just a linear, we're only changing, changing in positive ways. There is going to be, uh, our condition is going to get to us. And mm -hmm. that's okay. Can we be kind to ourselves when we, quote unquote, relapse? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 you know, can we really be kind to ourselves in that instance? And, and you know, as we do that, as we, um, uh, oh, because here's another important piece. I, I, I'm go, I know I'm going on and on, but I think this is- really No, no, it's good. It's good. The, so there's this dynamic that gets formed between, what I call or what's called the inner critic and sort of like the more indulgent, like the inner child kind of part of ourselves. And mm -hmm. so you're engaging, you're, 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 you know, you're, you're doing your, your, your path, your commitment to change, you're eating healthy and then you relapse because that's going to happen. You're going to, you're at some point you're going to relapse. And uh, that's why I'm curious to see what you, what you think about that. But like, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's a hundred percent part of yeah. the process. Absolutely. And then, and then what's going to happen is um, the inner critic is going to start beating you down. You, you see, I, you cannot do this. You're such a blah, 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 I mean, whatever, you know, we all have our, our inner critics and, and it's going to beat them, beat the person down. So it's this dynamic between that inner critic and the, and the more indulgent part of ourselves that starts occurring. Part of the key, people often try to Oh, what I have to change in order to change this cycle that I'm caught in, what I have to change is I need to change the behavior. Yes, that's helpful. And that can be one way to go. But another way to go is to, is once you've relapsed is to change the inner critic attacks. That is not helpful whatsoever. That mm -hmm. is, that is actually, it keeps the cycle going because then you feel so bad about yourself by beating yourself down that then you go more into the addictive pattern. Right. So can you intervene at that level? And, and often people don't see this. Like you've relapsed. If you are committed to being kind to yourself in that moment, no matter what, if you are committed to loving yourself and bringing and, and forgiveness for yourself, understanding of yourself for being human and having an, an unconscious that's going to pull you in all of these directions and really like committed to softening and loving yourself in that moment, I guarantee you that the next go around is going to be much easier. The inner mm -hmm. critic is going to soften. You're going to have a little bit more sense of, of, of strength, connect on capacity to move more in the direction that you want to go. Nice. Um, and, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, and really that's um, what a lot of times we will see that clinically. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that uh, lifestyle change is going to get you from point A to point B in this beautiful linear fashion. Yeah. But the process of transformation, the process of change is just like you described it. There might be some improvement, and then you're going to see this little relapse or this little uh, trowel, and then they start kind of moving back up again. Yeah. And I agree with you. Kindness is such an essential piece in being able to really break through the um, 
impenetrability sometimes mm -hmm. of these patterns mm -hmm. because uh, what you're saying makes a lot of sense that if if there's a mistake if there's a relapse and then it's fueled and addressed in a way that's very negative that's very critical there's that's very harmful to self it's just guaranteed to continue um, perpetuating the pain you know that the previous behavior was being utilized to almost cover up if i if i may say that no exactly uh, exactly and here's the here oh, go ahead go ahead no no go ahead go ahead here here's the thing often i mean those behaviors those unhealthy pattern behaviors of, of, of things are, are they're, they're rooted also in a lot of self-hatred and that self-hatred stems from very early on relational dynamics with our with our parents with our I mean, it, could, it doesn't have to be our parents but with our families of origin schools societies whatever whatnot conditioning yep. and so it's hard to be kind to ourselves. So here I'm saying, be kind to yourself, but, but it's really hard because the, 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 the force, the energy comes really. So, so, so having, a, having a, a, a therapist to help you, I think you need a team of people here. I mean, we need, we, we, there's not only one approach. I think we need, we need a multi, um, Facet. We need to focus on the on the behaviors. We need to focus on the on the on the you know whatever the different experts in like the, the diet plans and all of that. And we need to have uh, emotional psychological support there. And, mm -hmm. and somebody that's going to help us begin to heal those those early conditioning, early wounds that are that are that that, that are like this energy that's basically turned against ourselves. So yeah, really, yeah. that are basically the triggers yeah. of a lot of these things. And that really leads us beautifully into the next part of the yes. of your answer where you were saying, well, this question has two mm -hmm. parts, right? Yeah. How difficult change and transformation can be. Mm -hmm. And then this link between uh, uh, mental health and a history of, you know, these experiences yeah. that are now manifesting themselves yeah. as chronic disease. So um, help us understand a little bit more yeah. about that link that's right. now been well documented, well researched. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. So back in the, I think it was the late eighties, nineties uh, at Kaiser Permanente here in California. They 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 were doing these studies with people with obesity. And I don't know exactly. I don't remember exactly what the what the what the thing was exactly, but they started seeing that there were certain people that that they were they started recognizing that. Uh, you know, there was a lot of people that would relapse in, 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 in their plants and all of this. And they started studying the, their histories, their early, early histories. And then they start, they found this connection between um, early trauma, what, what's called adverse childhood experiences, the, the uh, adverse childhood, yeah, the A studies, their mm -hmm. adverse childhood experience. And they started recognizing, you know, and, and by, adver by adverse childhood experiences, it means abuse, means neglect, uh, emotional abuse, physical abuse, all kinds of, of, of and, and they have, they have, they actually, there is a, there is a um, test online that you can actually do and see where you score in the, in the ACE. Because uh, it really, like, the more trauma and uh, uh, adverse childhood experiences you had, the more that you're going to be most likely engaged in uh, behaviors that are that are self-destructive and hence and then so here's the other piece of that so then as you grow up you're little you have a nervous system that has a really nice baseline of of, 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 of relaxation and peace which is where we're supposed to be at our baseline we're not supposed to be stressed only little spikes of stress when when it's needed for action or whatnot um, we're supposed to be in this nice, nice baseline. So you're, you, the little one is in that baseline, but the, the little one is experiencing all these stressful situations, uh, uh, trauma, abuse, and whatnot. And then what happens is that the baseline of, of stress goes up. So then the brain starts releasing all those hormones that are great for, for, for action and for you know, cortisol, and you probably know this much better than I do, uh, uh, all of those hormones that, and then in, that are not meant to be, to be experienced in a continuous basis. But if you're experiencing that in a continuous basis, I mean, it's going to start messing with all of our organs. I mean, our, um, and I don't want to, uh, yeah, I know it's going to start messing with all of our organs there. And, and 
So there is a link, and again, this is a correlation, so you cannot make it as, as a causation, but there's a very strong correlation between the ACE, the adverse childhood experiences, and you know, chronic diseases such as heart disease, diabetes, obesity, uh, addictions, huge addictions, depression, um, anxiety, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's the, the, the connection between early trauma and later on um, chronic oh, illnesses goodness. is very clear. And, and clinically, I've, I see this in my, in my patients. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I specialize in trauma, so I work uh, a lot with people who have early uh, trauma. And it's, it's very, I, I often see, and again, this is my clinical observation, is there's a lot of people that have a lot of physical conditions when uh, like those chronic type physical conditions there's also a, a connection between, uh, um, you know, digestive type, type disorders and uh, 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 what's it called? What do, what do they call this diagnosis that they, you know, how they give diagnosis to, to, to certain conditions that they don't know what it is. Yeah, it's idiopathic. Um, idiopathic. Uh, colitis, ulcerative colitis. And so, yeah. yeah. And, I'm, and I'm here, I'm very venturing into territory that's, that, that I'm not so so uh, knowledgeable about but but yeah I, i've seen a lot how the, the 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 there's a lot of connection between all of those autoimmune type diseases yes. and, and early trauma yeah oh yeah absolutely and, and um you i've heard you talk about the reason why this happens is because there's almost like an imprint mm -hmm. in the autonomic nervous system that mm -hmm. part of the nervous system that is not fully under our conscious control mm -hmm. and that our nervous system lives and needs to live in this balance between the sympathetic or like you called it like the let's get out there and do stuff fight yeah. flight type of response yeah and then our parasympathetic which is that rest digest yeah produce calmer like yeah. lower state i've heard you talk about how these experiences somehow imprint yeah. Uh, on the autonomic nervous. I don't know if, that, if that's the right term, but they can either drive the immune system more to one side, more to the other side. Um, yeah. it go, tell, tell us a little yeah, bit about yeah, yeah, how sure. that um, I, I, I think, yeah. And you know, like, by the way, the work of Stephen Porges on the, the, the polyvagal theory really goes into amazing detail uh, on how this this whole thing works, which I am not the most uh, knowledgeable in the precise mechanisms of action here. But mm -hmm. what I what I what I seen and what I, what my understanding is that um, so again, as I was saying before, we have a baseline level um, of um, a baseline level of of let's say uh, calmness or or or, or, or being at a certain level of ease within our nervous system is, is that a good this is what's called the window of tolerance so we all have a window of, uh, of affective tolerance now so where an unhealthy uh, functioning nervous system is going to go in these curves of ups and downs within that window of tolerance, very smooth kind of like and throughout our day if you notice your day you know you gotta do something and their energy is going to come in sympathetic arousal kicks in and then, and then you go up, but, but it's stable. And then, you know, and then your action is done and then you go into rest and digest and, and parasympathetic kicks in. And there's, there's two, according to Porges, there's two. Uh, and this is not, um, anyway, there's two uh, branches of the parasympathetic when you go down. So there is what's called the, um, the more, um, ooh, um, the more, um, what, what, um, classic uh, parasympathetic which is for resting and digesting and you go into a, a very lower and then there is another side of the parasympathetic that Porges calls uh, the social engagement which is also a calm uh, uh, relaxed but there is a, it's it's not it it, it doesn't it, it has a little bit more energy to it and you can actually um, connect with others uh, engage, be engaged, but in a restful, relaxed state, which is, and you need both, you need both um, branches. 
But where I was going, where I was saying before is, so you have the, you have your, 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 your fine kind of wavy sting if you have a relatively minor trauma and that's, I don't know where that occurs, especially nowadays, but. Uh, especially nowadays. <laughs> yeah, but you know, trauma is a human thing. There's, there's no way around it. We all experience trauma in one way or another. But let's say, you know, good enough, you're, you're in that stable. But if you have, you have a lot of trauma, what's going to happen is, depending on, on, the, on the type of trauma and all of that, you're going you're to have a tendency to stay stuck on one of the upper or, or lower, or you can be, be stuck. So, so instead of having this smooth curve of you know, your daily life of ups and downs, you get something that triggers you, you're going to go up and you're going to stay in this up state above your window of tolerance, very charged. You can see that in very anxious people and there's all this energy. And then again, that is releasing all these hormones that are affecting your physical body. And of course, you're psychologically, you're suffering there at a great level. And the opposite happens too, which is um, as a way to try to protect us, our nervous system will kick into what's into, into a lower kind of like parasympathetic stuff. People with depression, a lot of people with obesity and like there's this, like a heaviness that comes in that kicks in and and it leaves us in this state of you know it's hard to take action it's hard to to, to move forward it's hard to to be engaged so we don't we don't get that uh, uh, uh sympathetic activation that's needed for 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 action in the world so we stay stuck under that that level of of tolerance and some people will go between the two there's it's really it's like there, there, there will be up here and then something will happen and they'll go, they, they'll skip almost their, 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 where they're supposed to be and they go down to, to collapse. So mm -hmm. they go between really high activation and then down into collapse. Sounds like certain diagnoses out there that's <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very common. Very days. frequent. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah. So um, obviously we see a lot of this, uh, Dr. Minotas, clinically mm -hmm. in patients that are either whose, whose uh, sympathetic system is fired up. We see it, we look at their adrenal hormones like cortisol, yeah. adrenaline, noradrenaline. And over time, those hormones, hormones are kind of shot, right? Yeah. And then we also see people on the opposite spectrum yeah. where, you know, they're running low. It's like, six in the morning time to start their day they've slept for 10 hours it's almost impossible yeah. for them to roll out of bed and kind of yeah. start going and obviously the the tools that we have in our discipline are a little bit more rudimentary than what you guys have mm -hmm. and one of the things that that's uh, been talked about a lot is this concept of coherence mm -hmm. and coherence primarily being driven through mindfulness right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um in your experience what are some of the the tools that a person can begin to work with they can begin to use introspectively and obviously as a as a as an additional step we're all obviously going to talk about having proper support mm -hmm. through a trained expert like mm -hmm. like someone mm -hmm. like you mm -hmm. however uh for somebody that that wants to initiate on the journey of exploration mm -hmm. of transformation mm -hmm. what are some of the tools that you found to be useful for your patient population in beginning to understand and discover if they in fact have a nervous system that is dealing with one of these extremes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah um so definitely and you mentioned mindfulness definitely mindfulness is is, is a is a uh, very powerful tool that you can start practicing to become aware of your patterns so so that, that having that self-awareness that that developing that curiosity about yourself what the hell is going on and not just at a not just at an intellectual cognitive level like but uh, but like really feeling your physiology we we can actually train ourselves to to through 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 meditative practices and paying attention to ourselves to know to understand these patterns within ourselves by paying attention to how our bodies react I want to I wanna give a word of caution, though. Here's the trick. If you have trauma, if there is early trauma, 
This is really difficult to do it on your own. I really do not recommend to do this on your own if you have trauma. If you, have, if you know that, you're, that you have a lot of trauma early on, and again, we all have trauma, but there's, it's like a continuum. If you're aware and, and you know that there, we need help. It's, it's very difficult to do this on your own, and it can actually be detrimental to go at it on your own, to try to like, practice me, go into meditation if you have a lot of trauma. Without any, without proper support, meditation can be a powerful tool to help you understand your uh, your patterns, to know your body, to know how you're how you're functioning. To really have this you know, awareness. We develop this capacity to be aware of ourselves without being caught up in the in the dynamics that are going on, which is a powerful tool for knowing ourselves, knowing how we're functioning, how our bodies are functioning, and. Uh, but we can get caught up in all kinds of spins and circles if we don't have proper support, if there is a lot of trauma. So that's that. So mindfulness it, it practices that, um, you know, to support our, and again, this is very individual. So it's tricky to give general practices because, because depending on each person's history and each person's symptoms and dynamics is very individual. So it's hard to give, but as a general rule, practices that involve body awareness, and movement, for example, things like yoga can be very helpful. Things like movement and awareness practice can be very helpful. And, and again, developing that awareness of ourselves. I think that this is getting a little frozen. Okay. Yeah, we, we, lost you there for, we, lo we lost you for a brief second, Dr. Minotas. You were talking about uh, yoga and, and therapies or uh, methods that incorporate the body and after yeah. yoga we, we lost you for about okay so yeah practices like qigong or, or tai chi and those kind of movement practices where you're combining uh being aware being aware of yourself and at the same time some kind of movement that can be very very powerful to support a the mindfulness the the the, the, the capacity to observe yourself dispassionately and b uh you know they they do uh, Let's say you're stuck on, on uh, let, let me give you, let me get a little specific. You're stuck on, 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 you tend to have a tendency, a depressive tendency, you tend to be stuck on parasympathetic and there's, which is way harder. It's much easier to work with anxiety and high activation and, and, and bring that down than to, than to bring, than to jumpstart energy when there is low. It's much harder to do that. Um, mm. It's a, it's a much thicker defense, I, I would say, like. Um, but anyway, let's say you're that. That's so, amazing. That's so definitely, cool. definitely um, uh, movement practices are going to be helpful there. Now, again, you're going to resist the movement practices because you don't want to move. <laughs> so it's such a, <laughs> it's a catch-22 there, no? But right. definitely, yeah. So uh, self-compassion practices, you know, that can be very, very powerful. The, the, the work of Christine Neff, she has this protocol, uh, and courses online to and really practicing self-compassion. And, and as I started today, like the, to me, that is the most important. If, there, if, the, if you don't start by practicing some kind of self-acceptance as to where you are right now in this particular moment, and you're trying to make these changes out of a self-hatred, it's going to be very difficult to get it because you're, 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 you're hating yourself and you're so focused on trying to change, get there somewhere. Whereas when you start softening that self-hatred, when you start uh, um, really, um, you know, massaging that self-hatred, bringing, bringing kindness, bringing softness, bringing, and again, support, very important in all these things, you know, being kind to yourself, being forgiving to yourself, start changing the, 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 the negative self-talk start start bringing in some some positive self-talk and 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 some body awareness and you start doing that then 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 the change becomes much more easy to to make and for it to happen it's almost like in, in another way of I, I like to conceptualize this is is our 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 nervous system uh, 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 i mean our, intrinsically we want to move towards health they're, 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 they're like naturally our, our, our bodies want to go towards health, but there's all these blockages as a consequence of trauma that have been there. So mm -hmm. part of the work is softening those blockages. We can't just get rid of them. We can't just dynamite them away. You have mm -hmm. to actually, you have to actually work gently with this and little by little. And this is the beauty of the type of therapy that I do, somatic experiencing, that it goes at it very 
little by little. You peel layer by layer. And then by doing that, gently softening, softening, little by little, it, 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 starts, it starts moving towards more health and you start getting a little bit more comfortable within the window of tolerance. You start getting, you start conditioning your system to be comfortable in goodness, which is interesting. We, we yeah, when there is, when we're, you know, in, in chronic patterns of self-destructiveness and even in physical conditions and things like that, there is a, our sense of self is grounded. It, it, it has, has, has been grounded. And, and I'm going to go esoteric here a little bit, but bear with me. It's grounded on, on uh, you know, like this uh, quote unquote negativity, this, this struggle, this pain. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like we identify ourselves unconsciously. This is going on unconsciously. We identify ourselves with this pain where I, I used to have a um, teacher of mine, or I, what would I call it? Therapist of mine, teacher of mine, we call it. We're, we're miserably comfortable. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's it's uh, almost like the state of strife yeah. becomes an identity. Exactly. Yeah. So, so as, as we start, as we start healing little by little, we start getting our, our sense of, of, of self, our identity starts shifting into a more coherent, uh, uh, um, into a more, more goodness start relating ourselves to, to more goodness here's here's the piece that i was that, that is tricky we are not our conditioning or not tricky but the, the esoteric part that i said we are not our conditioning we are not our sense of self we're much more than that and i'll leave it at that it's, okay. it's we're, we're, we're way more than our than our than who we think we are uh and and connecting with that can be can be also a great support connecting starting to connect with 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 our identity that's beyond the conditions it can be very, very powerful. So as you open this up, uh, Dr. Manotas, um, mm -hmm. there's more and more questions that come up for me. Yes. Um, and I'm sure that the people that will listen to it will have more questions yeah. if they listen yeah. to it. So if it's okay with you, I'll li I, I'd like to ask you yeah. first, um, you say that we are so much more than this sense or this idea of identity than our yeah. conditioning that yeah. are limiting beliefs, if I yeah. may call it that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's going to be people sitting out there thinking, well, then what are we? If we are not these ideas, if we're not these beliefs, then yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. hey, what are we really? Uh, and do we have to go into topics there that can be challenging for people when, when asking themselves that question? Let me let me think about how to respond to that question right now because I, I I I think I don't want to go too deep here, um, but I'll say I'll say this. As we're, when we're born, we don't have an identity, and yet we still exist. There's still a being there that hasn't been shaped by conditioning, by history. And then as, 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 we, as, we, as we evolve and, you know, interactions with our parents and our culture and our society, we start creating this, I, the, all the, we, our, our personality starts getting shaped. Our separate sense of self gets developed, which is a part of regular uh, psychological development. And then we, then I am, I am, I, I, I become, or this person, I am Manuel, who was born in Colombia and have had these parents and all of this. And then we, we hold on to that as if that's who we are, whereas that's just the, the suit, we could say. That is just the external kind of like shaping of our being. And again, I'm, I'm, I don't want to get too esoteric here, but um, so connecting and where, where i'm going where this could be supportive is connecting with ourselves that is not the condition that is not our history connecting making having access by the way mindfulness and meditation practices are originally meant for that and nowadays here in the west they're they're all about you know becoming better business person or getting healthier or reducing anxiety whatever whatever flavor it has but originally these practices are meant for the purpose of connecting to who we really are what who or what we really are beyond our historical conditioning so 
connect, like having access, and it's not that difficult to have access to that. If you, it's like when you are in nature and you're not thinking, then the, the, the mind quiets down and you're just there with the trees and there's this sense of awe that can happen and these this moments of like where the self-referential kind of thing kind of tends to drop away and then you're still here. There's still a person there that's, experience, that's having an experience, but that kind of like, unconscious identification with your history with I'm, 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 I'm Colombian I'm, I'm, I'm this and that kind of drops away that it, it's irrelevant and there's still this being so so that, that that's all I'm gonna say I'm not gonna go into what that being is because that's still an <laughs> ongoing exploration for me and it's, it's it's you know mystery we are a mystery that is for sure and and, and, and it gets deeper and deeper the more we go inside ourselves so it's a um, fantastic but, Fantastic. We do have access to that, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. We do have access to that experience of ourselves as being and as, 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 without the, the scaffolding that has been created by our culture and our commissioning. Yeah. So um, let me ask you to piggyback off of that idea. You were talking earlier about this. A uh, gradual, gentle process of removing layers, right? Of one layer, one at a time, and I'm assuming that as I the, lost you there for a moment, so I, I couldn't I couldn't hear what you were asking. Oh, my apologies. So you were talking earlier about removing layers yes. um, and gently removing layers through the type of work that you do. Yeah, and hopefully this isn't a wrong assumption, but I'm uh -huh. assuming that at the end of those layers, what you begin to discover is that true who and what we are. And it's always been my impression and my understanding that when people can genuinely, sincerely connect with that reality, um, a lot of their own limitations as to transformation begin to fall away. There's a freedom there. There's, a, there's like a... Um, an experience of chains breaking away because I'm not a, I'm not a something that's limited by what's been, but I'm actually free by who and what I am. So would that be maybe, um, uh, uh, beautifully said, I, I, I would agree with that a hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. I, okay. I, 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 and that's why I think this connecting with that, I mean, with, spirituality uh, that 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 deeper sense of ourselves can be a very powerful support with this when we're trying to make lifestyle changes and changes in our lives that are practical that are that are, that are about about taking care of our bodies and and having a more healthy life and, and a more uh, uh you know fulfilling life and, and, and all of that so connecting with that is very 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 powerful support and you know and people you don't have to go into a monastery meditating for all your life there's a lot of tools available nowadays it's beautiful how like the, the i mean the internet has many terrible things but it also has many wonderful things and 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 uh it's it's amazing you can take courses online nowadays there's there's it, the, that information is so widely available nowadays and it can be such a great support now let me clarify make a little bit of a clarification about yeah, yeah, when I was talking about the somatic experiencing and the, and that we go little by little layer by layer. Yeah. I, I, yes, I do believe that that can take us there. I do at some, at what you were saying, I agree a hundred percent, but I also was referring to instead of like certain therapies historically have been all about like, do you have, you have emotional wounds and trauma wounds. You're just going to go dive in there and you're just going to, you know, have this big cathartic explosions and feel your emotions deeply. And like, that's going to bring some healing. And there's, there's a place for that. I agree. I, 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 I use it sparingly. And, and I think it can be helpful to, 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 to bring a little bit of more potent activation. But I've, but in, in my practice, I've realized that the, the healing happens better when it's little by little because it gives you an ability to integrate so you can have these huge experiences huge transformative experience that open up you you knocked out a bunch of defenses you go into this breath work holotropic breath work and do and it's powerful stuff so i'm not i'm not i'm not 
saying that that's not a good thing. It's actually it's actually powerful stuff, but it has its place and it, and it has to be used in a, in a in a very conscious way and open up things. But then what happens is afterwards, your system is totally in a very far away place to from where you were, and that just creates it's really hard to integrate it to understand what the hell happened. And then what happens is the movement to homeostasis is going to pull you very fast back mm. to where you were before. Yeah. And yep. so, so, so true change doesn't quite happen as much as opposed. And it doesn't have to be either or. You could be in doing, doing both. There's value for intense things at times. But what I've seen is when, you've, when, you, when you go layer by layer, little by little, you titrate what's called Peter Levine, the founder of somatic experience it has this term called titration, which is a uh, um, concept from chemistry. No, you're going to mix two possible uh, uh, explosive elements uh, two two liquids that are, that, that have a very strong reaction. If you were to pour one on the thing, it's going to have a, it's going to create a, a huge explosion. But if you get a dropper and you start putting a little drop by drop, and then it just fizzles and fizzles. And then eventually, you mix them and you have something completely new. Yeah. So I, that's wonderful. I believe that change and transformation. Yes, there is a good place for big things. And I've seen big things happening and people changing dramatically in a, in, in a big thing. Uh, oftentimes those people have been doing a lot of. Anyway, there's a, and there is the, the little by little type work, which I think is, it gives you more of an ability to integrate. Yeah, and it's likely more sustainable. And, and that's really great because I was going to ask you a question about when people um, have these experiences where they have a close call, right? Where they brush death face to face, like people yeah. that have had a cardiovascular event, a heart attack, yeah. a stroke, yeah. or they've gone through chemotherapy. Yeah. Um, it, for many people, it, it's this... Um, this moment where there's a shift, but at the same time, there's so much truth to what you're saying because I've seen it happen. I've seen, you know, diabetics that have had an amputation and all of a sudden, or they're on their way to an amputation, mm -hmm. all of a sudden they modify, but a lot of those layers continue to be present, which gradually mm -hmm. start pulling them back in to yeah. to their their old patterns yeah so is that something that you've seen clinically i i i i i, I, hmm. I don't know if i i've seen the directly clinically but i i know of what you speak mm -hmm. and and yes yeah, so you, you do um actually yeah actually let me let me go back yeah i i i have seen this where people uh have big openings, uh, realizations uh, about seeing clearly what they've been doing, snapping out of denial in, a, in, a, in, a, in an instant and seeing clearly what they've been doing and big changes and make radical changes in their lives. I, and I think that's amazing when it happens. And, and, and at the same time, yes, those unconscious conditioned patterns don't necessarily lift away by that. You gotta keep uh, 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 working with those. So if you don't, if you ignore those, then you're you may be falling into a trap, and you may end up getting pulled back into the old patterns. Now, if you have that awakening, like realizing, understanding, clarity, lack of denial, whatever you want to call it, experience, and 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 then you, from that, you, you that that gives you like a really head, like a nice head start. You you make big changes. You're 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 on your way, and then you you add. A, a, a psychological exploration and understanding and investigation of how, what holds you back, what holds and, and really bring it, then, then you have a much higher chance of, of, of maintaining and, 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 and moving forward. Yeah. 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 It reminds me of a, of a book you recommended years ago called after the ecstasy, the laundry. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So but Jack you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. You remember that. Um, all right. So to close things up, um, yeah. I want to understand how can people begin to know, mm -hmm. first of all, if they are in a state 
where their um, nervous system is out of commission. Like I, I've heard you talk a lot about the somatic approach and how it looks at the body for yeah. manifestations of these issues that yes. are ongoing. Yeah. Are there specific things to look for in the body, in behavior, in energy mm -hmm. that could begin to be an opening, a window for, for an individual to say, hey, yeah, there's definitely something going on that needs observation, that needs to be looked at, evaluated, assessed. I'm not sure I, I, I follow the question. So, because there is this clear, um, if you are in some kind of behavioral pattern that is causing you um, or that is perpetuating or fueling either some physical condition or, or some self-destructive type behavior, some kind of addictive pattern or something like that, then, then clearly there's something there to be looked. So that's pretty obvious there. Now denial kicks in and that's a whole other story. And like our, again, those defenses to try to keep us are there. So it's hard. Sometimes it's really hard to see through that. Um, but I think what you're asking is, is there any sign that our bodies are going to tell us that we need to pay attention? Uh, yes, partially. <laughs> and yeah. my, my head went to, my imagination went to Dr. Manotas sitting with a patient across uh, and yeah. then a patient describing a somatic experience, a physical experience, a sensation in the body or something that's becoming manifest to them when they observe. So what are some of the uh -huh. common things that, that in your line of work you get to see and people report to you uh, that are, if I may use the word gateways, to begin to understand that there is, in fact, things that are going on inside? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, the one thing that comes to mind is like there's always things going on inside. There's always um, uh, we all have patterns and we all have conditioning and there's always um there's always deeper and deeper levels that we can uh pay attention to but i don't think i don't i don't i don't quite think there there is one thing that i would say that you can pay attention to in your body that's gonna because everybody's different and how it, how this shows up for every individual is different so it's hard to make a generalization here mm -hmm. i think that what what i'll say is when you become more investigative of your body directly when you have more developed that sense of what's called proprioception the capacity to sense yourself sense what's going on um, it is the way i like to put it is like we have this fabulous uh, gps that's that's innate to us and that is through the nervous system and we've lost touch with it because we're so caught up in our heads. And I'm going a little mm. bit of topic here. No, but that's part. This is exactly the topic. So yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, you're on top. We we've lost topic. We, we we've lost touch. A lot of it's not it's not it's not included in our in our in our in our vocabulary as much. And the the the, the, the thinking cognitive mind is 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 the gold standard. Is king. Is king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 our bodies are so much more intelligent than our brains here let me give you an example there was a study i wish I, I i i read it recently in a book that i was reading but there was this this study that came up that they gave so they did this study with people and and and, and i read it secondhand so i haven't read the, the the actual study but this is what i read there is a they they gave a group of people two decks of cards and the two decks of cards one card so it was like some kind of betting thing Depend, one card would make one deck of card would make them lose money and the other deck of card would make them win money but they didn't know which deck of card made them lose money and which and it was very subtle it was a very subtle distinction between the two decks so they looked apparently they looked very close they, they would pull a card and according i don't know exactly what the mechanics were depending on the card they either lose money or win money and according to the research about after 50 trials people started to get a sense whoa something's going on here and then between 50 and 80 trials, they actually got it. Oh, with this deck of cards gives me money, this deck of, but guess what? They connected people to the body, to the, you know, they, they, skin conduction, heart rate variability, they, they, you know, whatever 
mechanisms they did to connect the two electro cardiograms i don't know what they did exactly but they connected people to the to how the physiology was responding guess yeah. what the physiology had a reaction after 10 tries wow so the body knew before the, the mind money. knew which deck of cards was the one that was making them win money or lose money that is huge i mean the, huge. The, and and so our bodies are this amazing wealth of information and, and, and as I said, a GPS that will help us navigate. And when we're in touch with them, we're able to recognize our little reactions, our little things. So, and for healing, you know, if there is a lot of trauma, there is a lot of, we need to start. And again, this is where the titration comes in and the, and the, and the support coming. Because if there is a lot of trauma, we start trying to get really in touch with, you can go to some of those, Re, that's those types of, 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 of practices that are all about sensing yourself, mm -hmm. they can actually be very re traumatizing if there is a lot of trauma. So you yep. have to do it with carefulness and, and with support. Yeah. That, that's fantastic. And uh, I think you hit it right on the nail. That, first of all, that study is amazing. I'm yeah. blown away. I hadn't heard about that. And it's just incredible to hear how, how quick the body is to identify and to learn. And I see this clinically, and I'm sure you've seen this too, how so many times um, something like health or even mental health is almost last on the list so frequently in a person's life. They're so caught up right at this level, at this surface level of uh, life and bills and relationships and, you know, identity and what I have and what I don't have and you know, paying oh, bills goodness, and yeah. all of it is operating at yeah. this, at this level. Yes. But, but there's such a profound disconnection at times, unless we stop and really open up, you know, some space, some time, some communication, some with kindness, with safety, with security, that people can actually break through that layer yeah. and begin to observe what's what's going on inside and i see it clinically people that urgently and dramatically need to put their health as a top priority yeah. because they're becoming more and more chronic in a lifestyle related disease yeah. i'm sure that you see it too in the field of, of mental health people yeah. that continue to become more and more mentally ill because yeah. there's no prioritizing of this reality and for us we see it from the outside and it's like so evident so blatant but for them they're trapped within this situation and so that's that's why I, I was wondering if if there can be indications from the body early on before a person ever gets to that point and you you kind of answered it it's like the body is talking to you the fact that someone has a chronic disease their body has been, there's something way off in them yeah. Yeah. if it's a lifestyle related disorder, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think that you basically hit it right on, right yeah. on. The head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great, great. Yeah, I think so. So what is, um, just, just to close things up, I, I think we've gone for quite a while now yeah. about 40 45 <laughs> minutes 50 minutes yeah. so is there before i start asking questions about you and what you're doing professionally these days yeah. is there anything in addition that you would like to add to the topic do you feel it's pretty hammered out well i i guess i guess to to underscore and really emphasize and and to, to mirror back what you just said i think I really urge people to um, really get in touch or, or begin to get curious about their bodies more and, and, and really get curious about what's going on underneath the mental um, uh, uh, cognitive aspect of ourselves. And, the, and the, as you were, I love how you were explaining it, being caught up in the, in the rat race, in the, in the goings and goings and goings and, and begin to get in touch with something deeper within ourselves that, that begin to make that turn inside to, to, to notice what's happening. That, that can be a very powerful thing for, for not only for um, supporting our healthy lifestyle and our, and our healthy 
healthier uh, lifestyle, but also ch making changes at, 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 a, at, an, at other levels. Uh, changes in how we relate to others, becoming more compassionate, more, more open. Uh, you know, and the world really needs that these days. We need a lot more uh, non-defensiveness. Uh, uh, and again, when we get in touch with the body, the more comfortable we, be get, we get, we become in our own skin, the more we are able to land inside ourselves and, and, and feel ourselves as a, as a whole being, like landed inside ourselves, the less need to be defensive we have, the less need to try to protect some kind of, and, 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 and so we're, 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 there's much more ease. And when there's much more ease, uh, our, our responsiveness to life is more accurate, more, more appropriate. Yeah. That's wonderful, man. Those yeah. are some of the best words. And, and I just, I can't imagine how exciting it's going to be for so many people to be able to grab a hold and listen to your knowledge base, to your experience, because unfortunately nowadays the healthcare system, the healthcare industry is cut up in this system that's very, very focused on symptoms. It's very, very focused on the management of illness, on a pill for every year. There's no real incentive. There's no real um, reason almost for physicians and doctors to even um, guide a patient into a knowledge base like the knowledge base that you've provided to motivate them and inspire to walk hand in hand with a professional like you that can guide them through a maze that can be very complex. Mm -hmm. And if that maze begins to be, to, to find some resolution, to find some direction, it can be the very thing that that drives success mm -hmm. in a lot of their other clinical undertakings and, mm -hmm. and endeavors. So what would you say to the people that are listening to this today that are, that are wondering like, where do I start? Like, where, who do I go to? What do I look for in a professional? What are some of the things that they should be looking for as far as a method or model of treatment if they want to begin to deal with something like this? When you say something like this, what, what, what specifically do you mean? Well, talking about um, this desire to achieve transformation, this desire to uh, break patterns, to move forward, especially if there's some history there of trauma. And like you said, it's just, everybody has a history of trauma to some yeah. degree or another. So yeah. who is a good professional? Uh, what is a good skill set that a provider can possess in order to properly guide somebody okay. that wants to right. engage in this type of transformation? Okay, I'll answer my, 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 my question in, 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 my, in my field, of course, which is somebody wants to go to try to make some changes in their life and their stock. And uh, so what kind, of, what kind of therapist should they look for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's a very, that's a, that's a, that's a tricky question because I think there is, there's hundreds of methods of therapy out there and I think they all have their value and, their, and, and, their, and I think they're all, they can all be very supportive. I mean, research has shown that the effectiveness of therapy is not so much according to the model, but more to the relationship that is happening between the therapist and, 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 the, and the person. So my recommendation is to trust your gut. Here is again, trust your body <laughs> when you meet with a person and see what it feels like and, and really trust your, your, your intuition around it. Because I think that, that that will probably be a better guide than me telling you, you should go to this type of therapist or this. I, I, here, here's one thing that I will, will say, and I said it before, a therapy that does not include the body, I don't think is complete. I think you need, you need, you need a comprehensive, you need, you, you need to look at the mind, of course. You need to understand our cognitive biases and our, and our, and our, and, you know, our negative thinking. And you need to observe the mental, for sure. You need, to look at, you need to look at history as well. You definitely need to look at, at what shaped you and how history has made you where you, has shaped you to where you are today. You got to understand history as well. And then you got to look at the, 
you got to look at emotions, of course, understand the role emotions play and in, 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 in our in our thing. And then you got to look at the body. So I think something somebody that that, 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 that that can be comprehensive, but sometimes sometimes depending on where we are in our journey, it might be helpful to just see a cognitive behavioral therapy and really focus on understanding our, uh, getting getting a sense of how our mind is 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 pulling us back and, and getting a sense of what kind of mental patterns we have and all of that. Sometimes we might be able we might be better off seeing some kind of relational therapy and understanding our history and our and our what's called object relations and our, how our families in, in, in influenced us and impact us and how our sort of like our um, um, uh, filter of relating affects us how we relate with others is always rooted in how we were raised that's just clear cut and then and then sometimes you need to come through the sensations and the body and understanding our nervous system and working and healing and soothing the nervous system. So I would not give anyone, I think, I think there, there's two, there's, there, there are men, I don't, I don't advocate anyone in particular, obviously my, my, what I work is somatically, but I do, I do integrate. I do bring in the mind a lot. I want to, I mean, the mind is super important and the cognitive uh, component is super important. And I look at emotions and I look at history and I look at, um, but I'm always rooted in the body. I'm always bringing the, the element of the body as well. Wonderful. Yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. So um, primarily, it almost sounds like the most important piece is being willing to begin the journey. I think in, so. That's in, great. That, in that process of exploration, allowing ourselves to trust our body, our gut. Um, and, and, Whoa, love and, and, and I would assume that you know, just like in our profession, uh, the therapeutic partnership is very important. Feeling that you can place trust, confidence, Absolutely. that that you're being guided with kindness, with certainty to a certain degree. Would absolutely. those things resonate with you? Oh, absolutely, a hundred percent. I mean, if it, 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 the relationship is between the therapist and the client is is the one of the primary things of healing. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable with your therapist and you don't feel comfortable telling your therapist that you don't feel comfortable with your therapist, then that's, 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 because there might be issues might come and you might feel uncomfortable with your therapist at some point. And, but if you feel comfortable enough to tell your therapist about that, then you can resolve it and, and, and work with it. We're all human and, you know, no therapist is going to be perfect uh, to meet what's needed. And conflict is sometimes is part of the, of the work. Yeah. And that's okay. Right. Um, but if you, but if there is a sort of like, you know, if you really feel uncomfortable and there is this sense like this is not working for me, like, you know, like trust that, really trust that, address it, bring it up with, with your person and if you can. And, uh, but, uh, but if you need to move on, move on. Good. Yeah. And that's, that, I, I like, I like to invite people to take responsibility for themselves. There is a lot of information out there today. There's a lot of, it can be overwhelming. That is true because there's so much stuff. Who do I trust? Where do I go? You know, and, and, and it is a little bit of a combination. We need that external guidance. We need it because we don't know what we're doing, but we need to trust our own guidance. Mm. And we need to trust our own intuition, that, that our own GPS system as to, as to what there, and I, and I believe that there is a, if there is a genuine, and this, is, this may sound esoteric, but if there is a genuine intention and there is a, there is a commitment and, and you move and you, and, 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 and you make the effort, it's going to be, it's not an easy journey, but things will, will unfold in a way that will support you in that direction. And um, I, awesome. yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and I want to piggyback off of that very briefly because the same really holds true on our side of, of practice, which is sadly, again, we're seeing, we're living in a time where that therapeutic partnership is disappearing very rapidly in the clinical, in the physiological clinical side of things. Yeah. Where people are exposed to like the four to six minute appointment, the five to oh, 10 yeah. minute appointment. That's so sad, yeah. Yeah, and there's no real opportunity 
to really build that therapeutic partnership. And I don't know how it was for you, but I remember growing up and actually knowing mm -hmm. who my doctor was, yeah, who my absolutely. provider was, yeah. knowing their personality, knowing their, you know, what they did. They, mm -hmm. they told everybody not to smoke, but you would see them like a few times out of the month smoking a cigarette in the back. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, they would say that they were Christian, but they, you'd see them in church like maybe on Christmas, right? So there was this understanding of who the person was behind the curtain, behind the wall. Yeah. And that, and like you said, that partnership is probably one of the things that can create the most success for a patient on any um, endeavor when they're trying to improve their health. So I think that, that hitting on that point, that's really um, masterful of you because I, I really do believe that the therapeutic partnership is one of the biggest keys to success. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, Dr. Minotas, we're almost out of time. I know that you are incredibly dynamic. You're always learning. You're always moving forward. You're trying new things. It's almost like this um, very profound spirit of exploration uh, and discovery that I've got, gotten to know in you and about you. So Thank I'm you. sure that these days you're getting into new things and things that are on the, on the cusp of, of discovery. So yeah. tell us a little bit about what you're getting into these days. Well, you know, it's, um, I, I, I mean, I have my, my private practice and I see my uh, clients on a weekly basis, which I love. And I really feel very grateful that I get to do that. Um, and as of lately, I've been, I've been moving mo more in a direction, or not more, I've been moving as well in a direction of bringing more the on into the online world more. Mm -hmm. um, I've been having a blast making these videos that I, I've, I've created this uh, uh, page and YouTube channel where I make videos in which I explore topics of ecology and spirituality and sort of like inner work and self-discovery. But in a really playful way, like I'm just, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm bringing a little bit of comedy influenced by like Monty Python type stuff. Uh, but I'm also talking about important topics I'm, I, and I'm having a blast with that. And I really want to grow that. I'm really moving forward to growing that because it really feels very fulfilling for me. It really needs something inside of me that, that, that feels this deliciousness about it. <laughs> um, I'm also, I also, I'm also in the process of developing an online course right now. I'm gonna, uh, which is part of the direction that I'm moving towards. I wanna, this whole video thing really caught me by surprise. I, I went, oh, I'm gonna start doing some videos, and then I just, my creativity just came in, and I just had it a lot of fun. And I'm still amateur in the process, but my, my I'm, I'm moving forward with it. I'm really loving it, and uh, so I, I'm developing an online course on confidence actually on what I call true confidence which is a which is a sense of being so grounded and planted inside yourself that it's a it's an internal sense of confidence that you are able or willing to feel whatever emotion whatever experience comes up inside yourself so it's not a confidence necessarily an external it's not about accomplishing external things although if you're really landed in yourself and you're really in this, in this place, the external is going to be much easier, but it, but it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's going inside and, you know, people think that to be confident, they have to get these external accomplishments and that's not real confidence. That's, that's the superficial sense of confidence that will easily get um, uh, replaced by as soon as the external thing that they accomplish goes away or, or as soon as, as, you know, life changes and, then they're looking for the next thing. They're, 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 there's always this kind of thing like, okay, I, I, I got here. I feel good about myself. I feel confident, whatnot. And then as soon as that starts wearing off, then they need to go for the next thing. And it becomes this addictive thing. Or as soon as they lose it, then, then they go, they collapse. Mm. But, but to connect with a sense of confidence that's grounded inside yourself, that, that, that is like this, this, willingness to not fight with yourself anymore to be and no matter what's happening externally you are going to show up you are going to be present you with yourself you're going to honor what arises inside yourself that to me is true confidence um, so anyway i'm i've developed i'm 
I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm getting close to being done. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm having fun. I'm also bringing, it's not going to be your typical talking heads course where, where it's just me giving you the information and bringing the, the creative element to it. So I, I'm bringing, I, I, I introduce little clips that are like silly and playful throughout the thing. And it's just, so it's fun. I'm, 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 I'm having a, a great time with that. Um, well, yeah. Dr. Minotas, I have to say it's been such an inspiration speaking to you today. Um, just seeing the depth of your understanding in your field is incredible. Um, and that. whenever I talk with you, it's interesting because in my mind, I'm asking you questions for patients, but at the same time, I'm getting a lot for myself and I feel very enriched by the, com by the conversation. Had a big aha moment when you talked about strife as identity. I mean, I've gone through that so many times and it's an identity that, and it's a cycle in me that yeah. I have to frequently revisit and, and, yeah. oh, and, and um I'm, I'm there with you, brother. <laughs> I know. work on it with kindness, you know? Yes, yes, yes. We're all, we're, so, we're all in this boat together, you know? Of course. I know that. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. How can the listeners follow you and just learn more about your work and follow some of your work? Where can, where can they go? Great, great. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, there, I have my website. It's uh, Goodness with Dr. Manu. Um, uh, so just as it sounds, goodness with doc, D R Manu M A N U. Yeah, I'll type that um, into the description. And then I have my my Facebook page also, which is goodness with Dr. Manu at, at goodness with Dr. Manu. I think that's where I'm mostly. I, I think I have an Instagram thing that I haven't really been putting too much into it, but it's there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Instagram uh, stuff. <laughs> I need to I need to put more more energy. That, that this whole social media, it's it's such a such a thing it's cool i'm learning about it so I'm, I'm 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 moving more in that direction as well i think it's it's, it's how things work, work to the absolutely yeah it's the new it's the new um, world of but anyway yeah i have my website and my facebook page i think that there there you can find yeah all right I awesome will, so i'll be putting I'll be typing that into the description so people can just link straight to it if you want to follow dr manuel Minotas, i highly Highly recommend that you do. His work is very transformative. Uh, and he and the thing I love the most is he explains it in a way that's very accessible, that anybody at any spectrum of, you know, emotional, mental, spiritual growth can really access his teaching. So uh, make sure to follow him on his website and his Facebook, YouTube, and soon, I guess, more of Instagram. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Manuel Manotas, for taking time out of your busy schedule to be Thank with uh, us today. My prayer is that this uh, recording reaches a lot of people that are suffering and, and being very hard on themselves because of how challenging transformation and change can be. Yeah. And I really pray that they feel empowered, that they feel that this be, be, begins to elucidate a solution for them as to the steps that they can begin to take yeah. to have not just, like you said, that quick spurt of decision, but actually transformation that can last them throughout their lives. Yeah, yeah. beautiful, well said, yeah, yeah, there is hope. Yes. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Manotas. Have yourself a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye.